Hey Brian, let's get into the news for this week. There is a lot that's been happening and let's get straight into it. First off, we've seen the Hosky token go absolutely bananas on the blockchain. It's, I wouldn't say clogging, but definitely using the majority of bandwidth that's available on the blockchain at the moment. People are getting into this particular token. It's absolutely free. All you need to do is send two ADA to a particular address in their doggy bowl, which is essentially a faucet, but uh, cleverly named and branded. Uh, all you need to do is send a certain amount of ADA to this particular address and you'll randomly get a distribution of the Hosky token back at you um, in in the near future. It's a, There's a bit of a backlog. What they've done is they've done a queuing system to process the transactions and send it back the ADA. So it's a very smart way of doing it so that it's throttling the transactions and processing them in a manner that is suitable for the amount of bandwidth that is available on the blockchain at the moment. So it's a smart way of doing it. People are still getting their Hosky tokens for their ADA and it is absolutely free, which is really cool. Now, what's the point of this? What's the point of a meme coin on a uh, so uh, superior blockchain that is peered reviewed. Well, the idea is just for fun, it's just for laughs. And really, overall, in time, I think the market may put some value on it. With DEXs launching so, so soon, people will be listing their Hosk, Hosky tokens on these decentralized exchanges in exchange for ADA. So these people that haven't been able to get these Hosky tokens in this early stage of distribution may come into the ecosystem from Ethereum, from Solana, from Avalanche, wherever it might be and come in and say, hey, I, w I want some of these meme coins. These uh, TikTok investors told me to get some and hey presto, there is suddenly a demand and a value for it. So that's why I'm interested in it and why I've, uh, I've grabbed some early on and plenty of it so that I know that one day this, this meme coin this meme culture doge we've seen skyrocket from absolutely nothing to 60 cents and same with shiba inu it's it's just these these fun coins that people get into and now cardano has one as well so get onto the doggy bowl you might as well it's free it doesn't cost anything in regards to getting it just a little bit of a transaction fee to pass things back and forth and who knows it might be worth millions one day who knows we might have uh, husky millionaires <laughs> you might as well have a look but in regards to the congestion that the uh, network is having at the moment we saw that the transactions per second or transactions per day increased to a, a such a high amount that it was just under bitcoin's transaction per day uh, on that particular time so we saw so much uh, activity on the blockchain, it drew a lot of attention to it. Now, in response to that, Import Output have put out a proposal to increase or slowly increase incrementally the size of the blocks on the blockchain. And this is really easily done because all they need to do is uh, tweak a couple of parameters. And one of the parameters they're going to tweak is that particular block size increase. So they're going to increase it by 8 kilobytes to 72 kilobytes, a 12.5% increase. And it just allows for that many more transactions to be placed into a block and be processed. So it increases that uh, transactions per second calculation, or as they like to put it, uh, uh, data thorough put through the blockchain at any particular point in time. Now, the other thing that was going to be increased is the scripts, the Pluto scripts memory units per transaction, and that's increasing to 11.25 million, and that is also a 12.5% increase. Now, what does that mean? It means that smart contract developers can make their scripts just that little bit bigger and a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, um, uh, more complex in regards to what it can do. So that way, uh, these developers have more room to, to actually develop in rather than having to uh, work within a confines of a particular size limit. So that is a, a slight but really important improvement in terms of the size and what is happening on the blockchain itself. 
Now, this is only about 25% of what the blockchain can uh, handle at the moment. So Cardano's throttled back at 25% of its complete capacity and can increase another fourfold, so up to the 100% mark. Now, that is just on the layer one, so layer one solution as in the blockchain itself scaling at that point. But next era after small smart contracts, the import output team will be starting to look at the Hydro solution, which is a second layer scaling solution for Cardano as well. And that would bring Cardano into the millions of transactions per second. So it's going to be a very interesting 2022 when they start moving into that space. Now, in terms of smart contracts, we've been playing around with a whole bunch of different smart contracts at the moment, and mainly around the minting of NFTs. So this is a cool web website. We've got the interview coming right up, and you can check it out in the show notes below. You can get the links to it. But the Carter Hub have taken a different approach in regards to how they go through the minting process. Cardano's had NFTs since March. And this has uh, allowed the ecosystem to grow. You can mint NFTs directly on the command line using uh, the Cardano CLI, but this allows you now to actually mint it directly via a smart contract. And I've got an article that compares the two and you can get to it in the show notes down below. But Carter Hub have taken the approach where you can mint directly via a smart contract. So you can use their website, upload your little image or MP3, MP4, whatever it might be, and go through the process, add in the metadata, and you can mint it for free and just pay the transaction cost of 0.4 ADA from your NAMI wallet or soon to be the Uroi DAP connector wallet as well. And you can mint your NFT for such a low price. So just under half an ADA. So it's absolutely fantastic. Make sure you stay tuned for that interview. Now, in terms of other things that have been happening in the ecosystem, Lovelace Academy. These, this team has finally launched their little project. It's not little. They've spent thousands of hours writing this content and putting it all together. And it is an absolutely fantastic resource if you are just getting into Cardano and you want to actually start developing on it or building a node, whatever it might be. So if you're going to develop something, this is a fantastic resource that will take you down the rabbit hole, everything from what you need to build a node, how wallets actually work with good, good visual diagrams so you can actually understand how the wallets are set up and so much more. So it goes all the way down to Plutus programming as well. So if you're interested in developing on Cardano, check out the Lovelace Academy at learnlovelace.academy or I should say learn.lovelace.academy. Now, with our, all this development happening, we're seeing more and more wallets appear in the ecosystem, and this is really cool. This wallet is a community-driven wallet. It's a community-built wallet by the team from Cardano Scan. So Cardano Scan is a blockchain explorer for the Cardano ecosystem, and those devs are, are pretty cool. They're doing some really good, good stuff. They've built this wallet, and this wallet has incorporated some of the features that people have been wanting for ages. And let me, let me just go down to some of these feature sets here. So staking, that's pretty standard. NFTs is standard now. Hardware integration is expected. Multiple accounts. Okay, so we can manage multiple accounts. Yeah, that's good. Multiple delegation or multi-delegation. This is a big one. So if you're a whale and you hold millions of ADA and you want to support five different state pools, you can do it now. I haven't checked out this feature yet, but I am going to after this and do a full review on this. So if you're uh, listening to this on the audio podcast, make sure you check out the YouTube channel or if you're on the YouTube channel, check out the link in the top right hand corner. I think it's that side. I can't tell when I'm doing these videos. Check out the links to it and you'll find a video tutorial on how to use the Typhoon wallet for the Cardano ecosystem. There's these other ones here, our rich staking center, our metadata, uh, 
add receipts. Okay, yeah, for tracking what you're using your uh, transactions for. Voting, which is expected as well because then you can participate in Project Catalyst and vote for your favorite projects. If you haven't or don't understand Project Catalyst, listen to episode three of the podcast. It will take you through the entire process and what is Project Catalyst. And then we've got the ability to choose from a different type of wallet within the ecosystem, a uh, HD wallet, which is uh, a multi-address wallet or a single address wallet, which is how NAMI wallet works as well. So there's a whole lot of things in here. This is quite a development. You can get the, uh, um, uh, the app itself or a browser extension. So check out the video when I put this up. Now, um, in all of these videos that I've been doing on YouTube, I have done a lot around the Sunday Swap stuff and please check that out so you can get a better understanding of where things are at with Sunday Swap. Now, I did a little shout out for my NFT for the podcast. I said that you can now purchase NFT versions of the podcast um, so you can store it and keep it forever and help support the podcaster podcast development, podcast recording, podcast production, whatever it is. Um, I said initially it was 20 ADA, uh, but people went, oh, a little bit expensive. All right, that's cool. So I made it as cheap as possible, uh, 6.5 ADA for a NFT episode. It's a commemorative thing. It's kind of like tipping me for uh, producing these episodes. And um, I can pull up the stats now from nftmaker.pro or pro.nftmaker.io, it's a confusing name. But um, I've made uh, uh, one sale there, which is pretty cool. The the other two here that you can see, the one above and below, are um, uh, promo giveaways I did. So one for Yao, who was in this particular podcast episode. I gave one to him and then one to um, uh, another uh, chap that's uh, doing some promo for me. So that's that's where those ones came from. But this one here, I was pretty excited about the 650 that came in. Someone sent me that. And um, I can see that they actually delegated to the state pool that I recommended in the Sunday Swap one. So uh, it's, it's pretty cool. So I, I know that that one there is someone that um, appreciated the video and thanked me by um, buying an NFT. So thank you. Thank you. Now, some other news in the DeFi space. Sunday Swap is doing um, uh, their ISO. So if you haven't checked out the videos, please do. That hasn't started yet, but there is a video that I did from pool that talks about poolpeak.com.com. It's made by Patty. Look, look for it in the show notes. Um, you can get to that and have a look at all the state pools that are part of the Sunday Swap ISO. Now, in terms of the DeFi space, Adana have launched their Dana token on three different exchanges. I'm on uh, Bitmart here and also on Gate.io. We saw the token launch and it, it, the IDO price, the ICO price was 60 cents. And if we have a look here, let me just try and scroll back a little bit. The price at launch, uh, you can see there it is uh, 60 cents where I'm just hovering at the moment and it shot up all the way up to, let's see here, the price is $14.97. So it's an absolute, uh, you expect that at uh, token launches, the big dumps in the people buying up instantaneously, writing it up and then probably a whale here um, selling off and then multiple people selling off at this point um, to get back and recoup some of their, um, uh, take some of the profits off the top. But the price is kind of stabilizing as you can see. And then now we're at $6 here and I think that might have triggered one of my sales. I missed out on all of this. I missed out on the initial um, um, IDO, the Ethereum one that was on Occam. I missed out on the pre-sale there. Um, I missed out on the uh, initial launch at this point here. I I was on the exchange, but um, Bitmart released 30 minutes late. Um, and I think that affected the price as well. So I watched the price jump up. I wasn't able to execute anything and I just went, oh, okay, I'll just wait. And here it is at uh, the $6 mark. So maybe my orders have executed at the moment, at the, at the point there. So I'm just waiting for this to average down and hopefully get in at a good price of maybe $2. I don't know. Who, who knows? Um, I'm just holding this one for the long term. Now, other projects and things that I've been getting into, especially, is uh, the NFT space. And a couple of projects that I'd really like to highlight, one is Heist on Alpha. 
This is a comic book series by a creator here in Sydney, Australia, and Michael. He's done a really amazing job of building this narrative, building this story about a futuristic Earth, and you just have you just have to get into the NFT. When you buy one of these NFTs, they're, they're fairly cheap, they're fa fairly affordable. You can get one for 30 ADA. You have the PDF of the particular comic book series embedded in the NFT. So you buy the NFT, you can check it out on pool.pm, have a look at it, and then you can download and actually um, look at the uh, PDF version of the comic book series as well. It's Really cool. They've done an amazing job. The, the um, illustration artist, the storyline, the colorist, they're doing an amazing job. And this project is being turned into a full video production, full movie production. Um, so we'll just scroll down a little bit here. You can see some of the artwork. It's absolutely stunning. Uh, I like comic books. It's it's a thing. The anime art, the futuristic stuff, it's, 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 it's my thing. And uh, you can see the team there and furthermore, the uh, developers. You got uh, Patrick Tobler there from uh, NFT Maker um, there and also the TV series team that are producing this particular series as well. So it's a, it's a good enough series to be turned into a television series or a movie, whatever it might be in the end. So uh, it says TV series there. So check out that project, Tyson Alpha. I am... I'm, I'm pretty happy I got in on that. They're still minting as well. So if you're interested, check it out. Earth Natives is another project that I've been following, been looking at it for a while. They're doing a really good approach to building sustainable housing. Their, their product that they're promoting and pushing is a compressed earth brick that is used to build homes. It's very sturdy, fireproof, all sorts of really cool things. You can check it out. But what they did is they built a series of characters that are based on earth elements. So if you look at the different bricks that they build, uh, they would be using different uh, earth materials around the world. And it's made up of different minerals. So they've made these characters to not only uh, drive support and funding to build homes in Brazil and in Africa, they're also doing it to educate people about the minerals in the earth and what there is and, and whatnot. They've teamed up with an absolutely brilliant artist in Brazil and you can see some of the artwork here. It's absolutely stunning. Uh, check out the project, check out what they're trying to do. That, there's some of the bricks there. That's the mission that they're driving for. Um, it's an absolutely amazing project. I absolutely love it. And I do have an interview with them coming up very soon as well. Now, the last NFT project that I, I'm just, I just love, like I, I love the comic book stuff. And this is uh, Muses of the Multiverse. Um, Josh Howard here is doing a really cool series and it just keeps on going. He only had these first four, but they keep on dropping. They keep on getting more and more um, involved. So each one of these is a different theme. So we've got the jungle Amazonian theme. Then we've got the space theme. And now we have the Western cowboy theme. Excellent, fantastic. So I'm watching this. I'll be minting all the way through until he completely gets bored of the process and stops producing these things. And um, who knows how big this collection will get. I'm excited for it. Now, you can get to all of the show notes for this on our website at kadarno.com.au. You can check out our state pool as well. So if you're holding some ADA and you want to support the podcast, you want to support the show, stake with our state pool ticker is ADA Oz. You're supporting a local Australian state pool here, producing awesome content and producing a lot of educational material for the Kadarno ecosystem. So please make sure you support us. Give us that thumbs up that um, thumbs up, hit the subscribe, notification bell, that kind of stuff, and you'll hear more from us soon. Yeah, yeah, gotta do it like that. You've been listening to the Learn Cardano podcast. Gotta get it hype. Crypto is what we like. But this is not investment or financial advice. Gotta do your research, cause it's risky. We know it is. This show is educational and it's informative. Crypto's the future, really, it ain't no debate.